Um, thank you everyone for joining today. Uh, my name is Jenny Kim. As uh, James said, I'm the Assistant Director for, of Talent at the Research Park. And my main role is to help all of the companies in the Research Park to grow their workforce, that be student or full-time. So I help them connect with campus and the community. And then on the flip side of that, making sure that the campus and the community are aware of all of the different opportunities and all the different companies that are in the Research Park. Um, so uh, as part of that, I also try to coordinate events where you can hear from the employers themselves. So um, that's why we are here today. And um, for those of you who may have heard of the research park and are not super familiar with it, you think you know what it is, it, it is kind of a confusing concept or it's, a, it's an interesting, a very interesting place. So I'm going to just really quickly uh, provide a quick overview. So research park is a technology hub that helps cultivate startups and um, accelerate innovation, corporate innovation. So there are 120 companies from that range from startups to Fortune 500s that are located in the research park. There are about 20 buildings, and many of those buildings are uh, have multiple companies in them. Uh, so they have these small operations that are located right here on our campus. Because they are on campus, they are able to offer year-round internships. So you can work part-time in the fall and the spring, and then full-time in the summer. Now, every company does have a different setup. You do have to apply to each company separately. They're all independent but they're all located in this tech hub of Research Park. Typically, uh, they will hire freshmen to PhD, domestic and international students. There are students from all majors and all colleges working all across uh, the Research Park in all of these different companies. It's really about skills and experience-based hiring, and you don't have to take my word for it. You will hear that today. Uh, we'll ask the panelists to talk about um, who and what they're looking for um, when they hire interns. And we're starting to see a really, really broad, um, like it's, it, there's a lot of different types of positions that we're starting to see. So it's really exciting to see all of the growth that's happening in the research park. All of the internships in the research park are paid. And when we are able to be on site, research park is easily accessible by bus, bike, and very rare for campus, uh, there's free parking. So if you do have a vehicle, uh, you can uh, typically park for free, right, right next to the building that you're working in. Um, if you're interested in seeing what's available right now, always check out the Research Park job board at researchpark.illinois.edu slash careers. Only Research Park companies can post there. So you'll know that the job is located in Champaign, Illinois at the Research Park. And again, I'm going to emphasize you do have to follow the instructions very carefully on each of those job postings because every company has somewhat of a different method on how they're going to receive applications. So follow each of those separately um, and apply to each company individually. If you are still looking for something for the summer or even looking towards the fall, please check out and join us for our Research Park Career Fair. This is going to be next Tuesday, March 2nd between 3 to 7 p.m. If you'd like to register, you can scan that QR code and it'll take you directly to our registration page. Um, but if you wanna just check out who's uh, joining us for that career fair, um, uh, go to our website, researchpark.illinois.edu slash career dash fair. And you can look forward to meeting uh, several companies, including our sponsors, PNG Smart Lab, Corteva AgriScience and Granular and Motorola Solutions. Plus, I believe all of the companies that are represented here today will also be there. So um, definitely check that out. Also really good to think about is that Research Park is not going anywhere. And these companies are here uh, for the long haul. So think about the long game and think about just connecting with these companies. Maybe you do have something already but if for the summer, but you're looking for the fall or you know, you're a freshman and you're thinking about just kind of exploring and learning. This is a great opportunity to connect with companies and really uh, start having a lot of touch points and building up a relationship with these companies. If you are interested in the intersection of technology and agriculture, we have our Ag Tech, Ag Tech Innovation Summit coming up on Wednesday, March 10th. That will be from 8 to 4.30 and there are a lot of really great panels. Um, and if you're interested in connecting with companies that are specifically looking for talent in this area, we'll be having a career mixer after the summit from 4.30 to 6 p.m. 
and you can connect with companies that are using technology to transform the agricultural industry. So that is also on our website and I will put some of these links in the chat uh, later as well. If you have any further questions, I know I went through a lot of things quickly, you can always email us at uirp-jobs at illinois.edu. You can also follow us on social media to stay up to date on all of the various events we have. And you can also sign up for our student newsletter. Again, I will post that in the chat um, and we will send you updates on, uh, when it's heavy recruitment season, we'll send that weekly and then we'll move to monthly probably in March um, when it quiets down a bit. But we are always, Research Park's always doing a lot of different types of events. And so we encourage you to engage. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing and we'll get started with the panel because I know that is who you want to hear from. So um, we'll kick off the panel with an introduction. We have with us today representatives from Motorola Solutions, um, the American Supply Association D-Next Lab, uh, Abby Innovation Center, Synchrony Emerging Technology Center, and Abbott Nutrition or Abbott Laboratories. So I'm going to allow each of these representatives to introduce themselves and their company. And why don't we kick things off with Craig from Motorola. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, first, I just want to thank you all so much for coming today. It's great to have the opportunity to talk to you. Um, my name is Craig Ivitson. I'm from Motorola Solutions. So we are not the cell phone company. Uh, we are all about mission critical voice data services and analytics. And many of you might be familiar with the products that we use, especially in the 911 vertical. So if you think first responders, most of the first responder radio networks are built by us. The devices they use that are built by us, we do most of the software they use. So for example, when you call 911, more often than not, it's our software that's directing the right EMT driver to the scene and knowing that they go to the right hospital and, and trying to make that as quick and as efficient as possible. Big play in video um, and a lot of analytics that we do over all these different things. So that that's really, you know, we, we have a, a big collaboration with first responders. Um, I'm a U of I alum myself, graduated in computer science. I bleed orange and blue and, and I'm thrilled to be back here on campus right now at our research park, park office here. We have about 43 interns right now working on a variety of projects, um, mostly software oriented and think cloud computing, real-time embedded applications, mobile application development, cybersecurity, um, and analytics. Those are really the bulk of the projects that we have today. So that's who we are and that's what we do here. I look forward to talking to you more about um, Research Park and the opportunities that we have. Great, thanks Craig and Beth. So, I, hello everybody and welcome. I am Beth Ladd. I'm the site director in Research Park for the American Supply Association's D-Next Lab. The D in D-Next stands for distribution. So the members of our association are distributors. Uh, those are the people in the middle of the supply chain. For those of you who are uh, familiar uh, with supply chain and the land of business. Um, and they're the people that supply our homes and workplaces with pipes and valves and ducts and fixtures um, that we rely on uh, as people to get clean water and clean air and um, sanitary uh, needs in our homes and workplaces. So that's uh, who ASA is and who they represent. We're a little bit unique in that we're not a um, traditional company in the traditional sense. We're an association, which means we have members. So we, have a, we represent about 300 individual companies, small businesses, small and medium-sized businesses all over North America um, who distribute products in those areas that we represent. Here in the research park, I have a small team of six students and predominantly what we're doing are general business analysis uh, type uh, activities. So we do a lot of creating uh, data, creating market research and then analyzing that data and then reporting it back um, to our members with potential insights uh, and opportunities for them as small and mid-sized businesses as they're trying to um, compete uh, in the land of distribution with big companies um, in our space. So lots of, lots of market research and analysis, um, a little bit of, uh, sprinkled with a little bit of light technology. Great, thank you, Beth. And Jerome. 
Thank you, Jenny, and it's good to see everybody um, on this on this call. Uh, so my name is Jerome Ong, I'm the manager for the AppV Innovation Center. Um, we are a um, 47,000 um, strong company uh, that's located up in Lake County, so just north of, of Chicago. Uh, we broke off from a fellow neighbor. Uh, you'll, you'll hear from Tim Chatman uh, in a bit in, in 2013. We broke off to become an independent company. Um, we specialize in, in, in chronic, treat, developing and discovering uh, treatments for, for chronic illnesses. So you may have heard of um, uh, the drugs that are Humira. You may have seen ads for Skyreasy or Invoke. Those are all, of, all products that, that, we've put, um, that we've put out and developed. Um, we specialize in areas like immunology, virology, um, oncology, neuroscience. Um, if you look into any of these, uh, th those particular um, diseases might be sort of more familiar to, to some folks. Uh, but you might be asking, well, I'm not in biology or I'm not in chemistry, you know, why are you at the research park? And one of the things that we specialize in at the Abbey Innovation Center is more in the digital space. Uh, we are in the, we report into the technology arm um, of, uh, of AppV. And so a lot of the things that our students work on include uh, developing automation bots uh, to help improve processes. We are highly, highly, highly regulated um, industry. And so a lot of it is kind of um, manual processes that can be, be automated. So we create, our students help create some of those automation processes. We develop dashboards because we have so much data that our scientists are collecting all the time. So how do we present information? How do we dissect the information? How do we sort of put the information in, into a way that our scientists can then, uh, can then use. Um, because the process is a very lengthy process from discovery all the way to, to commercial, uh, we need a way to um, have the information move from one stage to the other. So a lot of uh, the work, that's a lot of the work that our students are doing. Interestingly enough, in the last couple of years, we've expanded beyond the digital space. So we have students who are technical writers. We have students who are graphic designers. Uh, we are actually about to launch a podcast um, internally. And so we actually have a student who is looking at multimedia and sound and audio engineering. Um, so we have a really sort of broad range of projects that, that, uh, that we work on. Great, thanks, Jerome. And next, uh, Brianna. Hi all, so um, my name is Brianna McCargo and I am currently a solution architect at Synchrony. And Synchrony is the one of the largest private label credit cards um, in the US. And what that basically means is that we provide different customized financing and credit programs for leading businesses within the retail, healthcare, auto, and travel space. Um, so you might have actually seen our products out in um, passing such as a uh, gap credit card or amazon um, but that's really a synchrony account that's um, kind of using our deep expertise and servicing to kind of provide uh, the end users to pay us back uh, our the credit card so yeah and at sync uh, the emerging technology center we have a plethora of projects and about 57 interns currently to where we use some of our deep expertise within the technology and innovation space to provide solutions to our end users. So um, looking forward to getting to know you all and here to answer any questions about the opportunities at Research Park. Awesome, thank you so much. And last but not least, Tim. Uh, yeah, I'm uh, Tim Chapman, I'm with uh, Abbott. So at Abbott, we're a healthcare company that we uh, support uh, many different um, nutrition, healthcare, uh, um, technology spaces, such as like diabetes care. We have uh, vascular, we work with our rapid diagnostics um, and our diagnostics. In fact, you may have heard us in the uh, media recently, we developed a 15 minute uh, COVID test um, that's uh, been one of our bigger uh, innovations this year. But at Research Park, what we actually do is kind of similar to what Jerome said. I like to always say we do the background research for, for a lot of these projects. Um, we have a lot of data, so we're looking, looking at creating a lot of dashboards, a lot of uh, data analysis. Um, we also work with uh, graduate students on a lot of literature reviews, um, trying to understand new technologies coming out so we can kind of be prepared um, for that uh, information. And then uh, we also work with our corporate IT uh, department, helping develop um, apps and things like that. So 
um, we, we kind of have, we work all over um, with that research part. Thanks so much, Tim. Mm -hmm. um, so next, I was hoping you all could tell us a little bit more about what student interns do in the research park for you, for your operations. Um, maybe describe some cool breakthroughs or some specific tasks and projects. Um, and I thought we could start with Craig again. We do have a question asking if you could speak a little bit more uh, or briefly about the project management or product management and software engineering internship roles and maybe some of the projects that um, SWE interns have worked on in the past for you? Sure. So um, I guess one thing is, uh, you know, we don't have any made up work. And I think this is kind of like most companies in Research Park. You're going to be doing real work on real projects that actually are integrated in with the rest of the corporation. And we have done some really incredible things here. I actually have one student right now who is working on uh, a big problem today in, in public safety, where if you call 911 and it turns out you call the wrong 911 center, Believe it or not, getting the information to the right 911 center is a manual process. They actually have the 911 operators have to call each other and over the phone, they tell each other and they manually enter the records between the systems. So one of my students right now is actually building an automated way at the touch of a button to actually immediately transfer 911 information between 911 call centers. Um, another, uh, probably the most groundbreaking thing that we've worked on here, and it's actually been a collaboration with the university is, this problem where somebody calls 911 and they speak a different language than the call taker. And you know, if it's Spanish to English, that's not too bad. But if it's another language, a different dialect, what actually happens today is that call gets routed to a national center and they start handing the phone around to different people till they find somebody that actually can recognize the dialect. They estimate like 10,000 people a year die because of this language disparity. So we've been working on this for about a year and a half now. And actually, we've got it down now where we can automatically detect the language through audio in less than 20 seconds. So this, this is kind of pretty incredible stuff. And that's why, you know, here we say we have this, uh, this kind of sense of mission. So, you know, those are, I have a number of different roles in the staff right now. So I have software engineers who do the jobs that I described before. I have a number of data scientists. We are doing a lot with analytics. And so I have a number, everything from business analytics to, you know, there's analytics in our 911 call software. We're doing analytics over our radio networks. We're doing analytics over our cybersecurity. And then I have um, communications interns because both internal and external, external communications is really important. Um, I also have um, a logistics intern and I have an intern that I call my community intern who makes sure that we have fun here at Research Park, right? So she's like my event planner and she makes sure that we're doing all kinds of new and unique things that keeps the office engaging and especially in, in COVID to try to keep us connected. So um, from a business side, I do have some business students as well. So like uh, a lot of that's doing either, you know, building Tableau dashboards uh, or doing analytics that actually feed the Tableau dashboard. So they're doing kind of like a lot of business process optimization and business visualization. So that kind of is a, a summary of the kind of work that we're doing here. Hopefully that answered the question. Great, thank you. Yes, I believe that covered all of the topics that were requested. Um, Next, uh, Jerome, if you could tell us a bit more about what the interns are doing at AbV, And we also had a question if uh, you could maybe specifically talk about what students in the sciences have done for your operations. Um, so in the sciences, uh, we've actually, so to jump into the, the, the question about the science. Um, so more specifically with the science, we've leaned on students with either a PhD or who have a joint degree uh, with, with CS. Uh, just given you know the, the nature of, of work uh, in the sciences, we can't have any uh, wet lab uh, type work uh, for for students at at the research park. However, students, let's say with the chemistry or uh, chemistry and CS um, joint degree, uh, we've been able to bring those students in. So, for instance, we needed to create a new uh, directory, a classification directory uh, for different compounds, and it was helpful to have a student who understood. 
uh, sort of nomenclature around around compounds, um, but then also being able to pair that with a computer science background, um, it made the transition into trying to create you know that directory a lot uh, simpler. Um, so that's where the science uh, comes in in. Uh, comes into play. Um, when we've hired students in the science background, like I said, it's primarily been in the PhD area. So Tim mentioned this, that he does this with his um, students at Abbott and we do the same thing. Um, so if we're looking at, um, let's say, clinical trial uh, devices and what are the best uh, devices to use in the clinical trial monitoring, um, we've had PhD students who are familiar with a particular area um, you know, do research and make recommendations on what uh, devices that we could use in clinical trial monitoring. Um, but you know, again, it's students who are in the in the PhD um, area for for science. Um, there, um, we've had students who look at uh, genomics. Um, who help us with some of that research, and then most of this is theoretical uh, research that we're looking uh, looking into, and, and those those contributions have been um, very helpful. But more broadly, Jenny, to your question about what our students do, you know, like I said, it's largely in the in the digital space um, that that we have, and you're very similar to what's been shared so far. Uh, we do have a lot of data, so a lot of the dashboarding, a lot of the uh, data analysis. Uh, but in addition to all of that, you know, we we do have a market research uh, research team um, of students who, for instance, help some of our operations teams with vendor valuations, um, or if our R and D one of our R and D labs is looking for a new uh, vendor to help with, say, instrumentation and 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 uh, learning systems um, or learning management systems. Our students have been able to help and make proposals um, for for that um, as as well. Um, for this summer, I think one of the things that might be of interest, based on kind of what I'm seeing in, in the chat um, with with students inquiring about different roles, um, we are going to be looking for software developers. We're always looking for students who are interested in statistical analysis. Um, students with backgrounds in, in Python. Um, we are looking for students who might be interested in combining um, interests in business together with a technical acumen um, to function uh, or to play business analyst uh, functions, of uh, kind of being that translator between the labs and our technology um, folks uh, there. Um, and I mentioned this in an introduction, you know, communication uh, uh, is always a area that we're also looking for. Uh, we currently have an opening um, for a technical writer um, as well. Great, thank you, Jerome. And maybe we can um, over to Tim and uh, since Abbott and Abby kind of have a little bit more of that sciences side, uh, same kind of question to you, what do your interns do and do you have opportunities for scientists sure. and humanities, social sciences? We have all sorts of majors represented today. Sure, uh, so for the sciences, um, we look at a lot of um, nutrition, uh, chemistry, um, actually a lot of engineering too, but uh, what, what we're looking at is a lot of literature for if it's a PhD or a graduate student, a lot of literature reviews, um, especially on the nutrition side, looking at uh, new ingredients, new, um, new interventions and things like that. Um, for, and, and a lot of those can lead to publications. So we even uh, had a student who just published or actually is in the process of publishing now. And uh, we probably last year, I believe I had three or four publications come out of our our office um, in, com in com uh, combination with you know uh, um, testing literature review on that to kind of see what's out there what what new technologies and and kind of kind of like that um, and then as Jerome said we also do a lot of uh, the business to translation um, you know looking at a lot of the data understanding our data and. How, how can we get better uh, information out of that? So we have students who are working on developing dashboards uh, for some of our uh, plants as far as look and can we change the frequency of testing? And stuff like that to help with that. So background, but it's not always needed. Um, it's more uh, the willingness to learn. All right, great. Thank you, Tim. And I think your internet might be, your network might be going in and out a little bit. 
Yeah, I apologize. It keeps going out. That's why I keep trying to stop. I can't see. Um, oh, I don't oh, know good. what's going on. Um, Jen, Jenny, could I jump yes. in for a second? I wanted sure. to follow up on a comment you made. You talked, you asked a question about sort of humanities um, and students in humanities and social sciences. And I wanted to sort of pick up on that just for a little bit. Yeah. Um, I think one of the areas, you know, two two areas that um, you know students are in humanities and social sciences might be interested. Um, we're increasingly seeing roles. Um, in UX and you know a lot of times people think that UX you either have to be a graphic designer or, or someone with a software engineering background to do UX but a lot of the times it's understanding the end user and be able to um, frame the information and provide the information back to the developers um, for for that um, so we are looking for for someone for instance right now who doesn't necessarily have a, a CS background who might be interested in you know working with Microsoft Power um, application platforms and or power platform applications um, to help actually present the information and tell the story of the information and it's not necessarily sort of doing the crunching of the numbers but said okay here is the data here's the information that we need to present what is the best way to actually share that information and tell the story and so I think having that um, uh, perspective, a critical sort of perspective in terms of presenting the information and sharing out that information is going to be an important piece um, there. So if there's anyone in the humanities and social science on this call who are interested you know, in, um, in dabbling in the digital space um, but don't have a, a CS at a background, you know, these are, are roles that uh, we, we welcome, and the candidates we welcome. Great. Thanks so much, Jerome. Um, so we'll let Brianna talk about some of the internships that are at the at, at the Emerging Technology Center. And then I think we'll move towards the skills that all these companies are looking for, because it seems like a lot of the questions are very similar in terms of, this is my major, do you have something? This is my major, do you have something? Um, but we, we're definitely gonna address that question. So um, Brianna, if you wouldn't mind telling us more about the Emerging Technology interns uh, that are working in the, uh, Research Park location, and we did have a request um, specifically to hear a little bit more about the business analytics one, I believe. Yeah, the business and consulting track. Okay, um, so we do have a plethora of projects right now for our interns to work on, um, and these projects have all been um, pretty much handpicked from our senior leaderships down on like the top strategic initiatives that is important to the company um, for 2021. So these aren't just as a, a lot of um, the other representatives at the companies. This isn't busy work projects at all. I think a lot of the companies at Research Park are, um, you know, real work that is production facing um, commercial for our companies. And I just wanted to kind of reiterate that as well with Synchrony. So um, some of the interns that are working on now is stuff around our native app. So optimizing, you know, updating our um, native app usage and making it, you know, um, more available and precise in some of the functionality and de deliverables that we use um, out in production to um, wallets. So there's a lot of initiatives around um, mobile wallets and third party mobile wallets to ensure that our synchrony cards are kind of the top of wallet card. And with that, we are kind of leveraging some machine learning theories to um, take the data from those third party mobile wallets into our synchrony account and go space. Um, and to direct response of COVID-19, actually, um, we, it has transformed the way we work, not only at an emergency technology center, but at each of our um, locations across the states. Um, so there's actually a POC at the Emerging Technology that's being led by a group of interns to lead the implementation and pilot of a hotel and app for um, those employees who want to still kind of have a dedicated workspace that is outside of their home um, as some of, um, it's another opportunity for um, folks to still have that office feel. Um, but as you may know, that is not the case for at the moment. So there is um, a couple of interns that are working on solutions. And um, a lot of the 
roles and responsibilities of those interns now vary from you know management to actual software development and engineering. Um, so if you are not a technical person at all, there's opportunities for you to you know maybe help manage the process along the line to getting down to the code and checking the specs and creating those solution architect diagrams for the team to deliver. Um, so yeah. Right. Great. Thanks so much, Rayana. Um, <clears throat> so I think uh, this is a really great opportunity to address the question of do you have something for my major? Um, so if we could uh, ask the panelists to talk a little bit about what kinds of students do you typically hire for uh, the, the different types of roles that you have? Um, is it typically undergrads, graduate students, both? Do you hire international students? And we did have a specific question. Are you hiring through the university if you hire international students? Um, and you know, I think something important to address here, is it really the major that you're looking for or is it really, is it more uh, particular skills and the matchup and things like that. So, so maybe we can start with Beth. Uh, so I certainly hire um, from all different levels and all different academic backgrounds. Uh, I have um, I have a small group, but um, certainly broad in terms of academic background and interest as well as academic level. So I have students from LAS, from the social sciences, students from the College of Business, um, stats, and even a couple of engineers uh, who aren't doing anything in the field of engineering with me. Um, so uh, right now, um, and I do also have an international student, so we hire international students as well. Um, they're all focused, they're all coming in under a single broad role of business analyst. And so that means that they are doing a wide variety of things as uh, several of my peers here on the call have mentioned. And that's everything from um, collecting and curating data to doing, um, to sort of uh, straddling the world of business and technology to creating data visualizations and telling stories um, with those data as well. So there are certainly a wide variety of opportunities, I think, um, certainly um, in my lab, but you heard the same from my fellow site directors and AbbVie and Abbott and Motorola and Synchrony. There's, um, we're all interested in a wide variety of roles. For my part, I'm much less interested in what you're majoring in than what you're interested in and what you're willing to do, how you're, how you're willing to work, how you're willing to pitch in and help, how you're willing to learn and grow and offer from not only your academic background and experience, but your personal passions and interests as well. Um, I have a student who's majoring in business, but she has a lot of passion in, in um, video and uh, audio editing and recording. And that has been incredibly useful for us as we've done our data story storytelling because we can't tell those stories in person right now. So we need a way to capture those stories and distribute them broadly to our members. So that's a great example of her major in accountancy having very little to do um, with the skills and gifts that she's offering in the workspace. Great, thanks so much, Beth. And uh, that student she's speaking about actually worked for us as well as a video intern. And I was shocked to find out that she was an accounting major. Um, but she, yeah, it was, it was amazing. It, she was a great intern and I'm so happy that she found a good place at Deep Next Lab as well. Um, Craig. Sure. Hey, just before I get to the what type of people, I just hopefully one thing you're it, that all of you that are here today are kind of getting from this is it's pretty collegial environment here in Research Park. I mean, you hear all of us talking about each other. We're is not a we're not competitive here. This is a really great place to be, and we really support each other. And you know, we all have really cool offices. So, well, I think I might be the only one in the office today, but you know, we all are very proud of our offices, and I know everybody here has a really cool place, and we all like to create a really comfortable place. So one of the cool things about Research Park is we're also gonna get 125 companies to come together, get along, support each other in this kind of collegial way. So it's a really unique and, and special environment. Um, 
quickly just to go on to the, you know, the reason Motorola Solutions is here, the reason we came here is to find amazing students like yourself to convert to full time. That is our primary um, reason for being here. So we take internships very seriously because for us, it's an avenue to full time uh, employment. In fact, last summer, every student that I had here received a full time offer. Most of them received offers from multiple places in the, lo in the corporation. Um, by far, we hire, by far, we hire more undergrads. So right now I have one PhD, four masters, and about 35 plus undergrads. So by far, we uh, more undergrads than anyone else. And as Beth said, you know, I'm not, you know, I, we, we're looking, you know, our disciplines are software engineering, data science, and the humanities. Um, you know, for software engineering, uh, you know, there are, there are go-to degrees, but I'm, we're always open. I have students right now doing data science who are physics majors. I have informatics majors who are doing it. So it really does come down to, if you have a passion for that and that's really where you've you know, put your time in, absolutely. You know, I, I think the one thing I've learned since coming back is the major does not uh, define the expertise or the passion, right? Um, I even have an artist I've hired. So I have a, uh, I have a, liberal, a painting major who's actually been on because I'm a big believer in this intersection of art and engineering. So there's lots of opportunities for different types of majors. As far as international students go, um, I do hire international students. We always prefer to hire them directly. Um, as that, of course, requires you to be here for a while so you can have CPT. I have hired them through the university as well. Again, since we're really aimed at full-time conversion, I hire international students who are planning to get their master's degree because, uh, and it's not because we don't want to hire those that are undergrads, but we've not had success converting uh, bachelor's gr degree graduates in, with, into an H-1B visa. So I, last year I placed four master's students, international students with the company, and they're all right now going through the, the process of getting their H-1Bs and, and we take care of all of that. So we're very supportive of that as well. So, I mean, lots, as everyone said, lots of diversity in terms of the people that we're looking for. And I think that it makes us a stronger team by having you know, a variety of, of backgrounds and degrees. Thanks so much, Craig. And uh, Brianna? Yes, um, so just to go back of what Craig said, we typically are open to hire pretty much anyone, um, but the main factor in the skills that we want to ensure is um, that you pretty much align to our values in the company. So um, as long as you tell us your story, um, your authentic story, and that we see passion in an area of passion that you um, rely to, I think there's a pretty good chance of an opportunity for you to kind of work alongside of us. Um, Synchrony can give you the skills on, on and teach you the things that you need to do in order to perform your job correct, you know, properly and effectively. Can't teach you how to, you know, have the values um, to fit in within our culture. Um, so I think that's a pretty important factor. Um, I started off personally as a marketing major at the College of Business, and I knew I had some interest in technology. Haven't seen a link of code ever my sophomore or uh, junior year down at the East College of Business, but um, Symphony was one of those companies who really took the chance to um, give me the opportunity to um, gain that experience in that. Um, so super proud and thankful of the opportunity that Symphony has provided me now to even present to you all, but it just goes to show that um, we are pretty much open to any major or anyone who's interested in learning about the business as a whole. Um, we do tend to hire, I would say, a third of undergrad. Um, and we do hire um, graduate um, opportunities as well to graduate and PhD students. Um, however, um, the Emerging Technology Center is more attractive to the um, undergrad students, including freshmen. Um, so if you are interested um, in our spring internship or summer opportunity, I, you should take a look at that as well. Great. And does Synchrony hire international candidates? Yes, we do um, through the university. Okay, great. And Jerome. 
I, I appreciate Brianna what you you shared in terms of the the passion and in terms of you know there the are things that a company can teach but there are other things that you know a company cannot teach and I think that's the same with 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 us at 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 the um, we we want folks who align with um, how we see the world and and um, the the, com- the values that we espouse as as a company and that's really important. Um, for for us, um, you know, a lot of times we say we are a patient centric um, company, and it's easy for us when we're dealing on the technology side to say, okay, but I'm not creating sort of any treatments. What does this have to do with with patients? But um, as Tim sort of mentioned, we we support the back end, um, and that none of this discovery will take place without sort of our role. And sort of keeping that focus um, is is really important in um, in in the work that that we do. Um, so ad- attitude, I would say, is is a big piece um, that that we look for. Um, you know, the skills are are important, and we do screen for that. Um, the vast majority of the students that we hire are in CS and in, in uh, CS uh, uh, computer engineering, electrical engineering. That's the the bulk of the students that we hire. Um, we have students who are in statistics. Um, but we also have students who are in business. We have students who are in psychology. We have students who are in industrial design. Um, we tried to bring on a textile uh, design student, and, but that did not work out. But you know, we, we had a role for, for that student um, as, as well. So we have a whole range um, that we, we recruit for. Um, we do hire international students. Uh, it is on a uh, selective basis. Um, it, we, it, we look primarily at the experience. Um, there is a background check that does take place um, because, again, of the regulations that we um, are held to, sometimes the background uh, check takes a little longer. And we there have been one or two cases where it's taken too long. We've had to sort of uh, hold back on, on the offer. But for the most part, it's not been an issue. So, you know, we've continued um, working with international students. Um, that is only for the 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 internships. Um, So we do work with students on the CPT side of things. OPT is a completely sort of different story um, and we can have a different conversation uh, around around that. Great, thanks so much, Jerome and Tim. Um, Yeah, so at Abbott, we do hire international students for the internships, similar to AbbVie, um, only for the internships. uh, And we hire them directly uh, uh, with, but you need CPT. as far as the type of majors that we typically are looking for, um, like I, it's kind of similar to what you've heard a lot of. It's going to depend on what what your passion is and kind of what you want to do. Um, one thing I've always said is, you know, your your degree shows me that you can be trained. I mean, there, that you have a background, but you're not always going to use that. You know, you're going to the company's going to show you what they want. Now, with that said, there's a couple projects that we do have that are more uh, I guess specialized or or something like that. So a lot of our PhD and master's students would be doing more of the literature reviews and and writing some of the papers and then that's just goes to they have more experience doing that. Not to say that the undergrad cannot because we've I had an undergrad uh, last semester write a literature review on a um, project for us and, and it was no problem but she just also she had experience already doing that so so that's where that came from. Um, but we've got students in engineering, students in nutrition, food science. Um, we have uh, kinesiology, uh, communications majors. So we hire uh, um, a lot of different uh, backgrounds. And if you're, as far as the projects, we're actually considering uh, hiring currently starting in the summer. We'll hire, uh, I'll have those job postings hopefully later uh, next uh, month. And then we'll also hire again in uh, for fall. Um, and then normally what I like to do is we like to keep our interns on. So I have one intern who's been with us for, she's started with us as a freshman. She's going to be a junior. Um, she's in an, and she'll hopefully come back again for her senior year. So we that's another reason that we also like to have people that are able to go from one job to another, one project to another and be Uh, interchangeable and and have a passion to kind of learn and do that kind of stuff. Great. Thanks so much, everyone. Um, And I think you all heard a a consistency that really it's more about a particular skill set. We've gotten a lot of questions about specific majors, but 
debt major, you can do a lot of different things. You might have hobbies, you might have passions for different areas. And I do think that one of the really great things about Research Park is that um, the site managers and all of the companies are very open to hearing from you. And if you can match up your skills and you know you read through a job description and you can do that job, they will hear you out. They will, you know, if you can make your case, you know, there's there's a good chance that um, you know you'll you'll be able to have a conversation around that. Um, and speaking of conversations and making those connections, so we do have a great question here. Um, do you recommend applying? for open positions right now or waiting to speak to you, somebody at the career fair next week? And Craig, go ahead. I always, I, I, I mean, it can be either of course, but um, we actually will have more positions posted before the career fair. So we actually planned on actually putting out our positions beforehand. So um, I guess it could be either, but I personally for Motorola Solutions, I would say come talk to us at the career fair and apply then. It's always great to put uh, the face with the name and actually that gives you talking to a recruiter with the way our process just to be transparent. You know, we think of this process, it's kind of like, you know, um, speed dating, right? So we got a chance to kind of meet you and then uh, and then after that, it's really the follow up towards um, more conversations. I also wanted to say one other thing, we've talked about different majors and things like that. I just want to also just mention um, the importance of diversity and, you know, Motorola as a company, I'm sure all the research per companies are really committed towards diversity. So I would strongly encourage any um, minority or underrepresented candidates to apply. Um, you know, we are always looking to create a more diverse population here at Research Park. And I can tell you at Motorola Solutions, um, it, would be, it would be wonderful if we could have a strong commitment from underrepresented uh, peoples to come and join us here at Research Park. So I would apply it either. I mean, come, I'll have more positions next week, but that's unique to Motorola Solutions. Great, Ben. Uh, you can uh, you can apply at any time for me. Uh, so it's uh, I'm always I'm always looking um, for the right fit for the right student. Um, that um, as Tim said um, from Abbott, we um, there's some there's some ability to understand um, from the research park employers that you have the right aptitude um, because you've managed to get into one of the finest universities um, in the Midwest. Um, and perhaps even on the planet, if we're, you know, touting our institution just a little bit. Um, but we're also looking for your attitude, right? And those, and and your willingness to learn and grow and pitch in and help um, and become, um, evolve and become part of the company, um, seeing yourself as part of the work and part of uh, those solutions. So I think that's true of all of us. Great, thanks. And Tim? Um. Yeah, so for us, uh, it, it's both. Um, I don't have any positions uh, posted right now. Like I said, they will be coming. But one thing I always tell uh, the students, especially when I'm trying to help them get full-time jobs is look at the position. If you see a position on there, um, reach out. Like if you see a position from Abbott, you can reach out to me and say, hey, I wanna know more. I actually appreciate that. And a lot of times that does like, uh, Craig said, it goes to the front of my mind then, okay? It says, oh, well, I'll talk to this person. And when I'm getting, going through all the resumes, I'll mark, hey, I already talked to them. This is, you know, and it helps that. It also helps you because you get to find out, is this even what I kind of want to do? Um, and I think everybody at Research Park will be willing to sit, sit down and say, yeah, I'll take five, 10, 15 minutes to say, tell you a little bit about the position and, and what we do. And I think that's a, a great way to do that. Great, thanks so much. Brianna? Yes, I definitely think it is uh, up to your discretion, but I do see the career fair as an opportunity for you all to kind of interview the company um, at that point in time. Um, at this point, you should probably already have prepared for, you know, the moment that you are at the career fair, you have your facts and, you know, your questions in hands to kind of ask the company a little bit more than what you see on their website or even more from the panel. But I think um, all of us on the panel can agree that, um, you know, it is the, that time for us to tell the students more about why we enjoy working here and some of the opportunities where you may see fit um, to work with us in the summer. 
Great, thanks so much, and Jerome. Um, I think one, one piece I want to remind um, everyone who's on this call, I think you're hearing um, from, from, from Beth and Craig, Tim and, and Brianna, that we are happy to speak to, to students at the career fair, and that is true. I think we're all at the research park are always happy to speak to, to students at the career fair. Um, I want to sort of put out a sort of a, a caution, I think sort of in, based on my former sort of roles had having worked in, in career services as well, um, that sometimes when you go to some of the larger career fairs, that might not always um, be, be the case. I think one of the advantages of the research park career fair uh, is that we have the size uh, to, to your benefit actually, where we can speak to students um, so in the research part context, I actually do, I would lean to what's getting to know the company. Um, some of our best hires have been from the research part career fair where we got to know the student, the student asked great questions. Um, you know, one of those students actually ended up winning an award from the research park for, for best, uh, best intern. Um, and the work that he did was just absolutely uh, phenomenal. But that was because he was able to create such an impression um, on us. And we, when we were screening um, resumes, it was easy for us to, to pull his, his resume. Um, I want to caution also, you know, as we approach the, this career fair season, right, that you also need to be able to read um, the, the environment and the interaction when you're asking those questions. Know when it's time to pull back because asking questions is good, but as you pull, as you, if you get too um, enthusiastic, if I can sort of use that, that word, it can backfire on you, right? So you need to have the sort of the EQ to say, okay, I've asked enough questions. I need to yield my time to others um, on, on my group or you know, whoever is in front of me or whoever is speaking to me is 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 done with the conversation, and I need to sort of uh, move move uh, move forward. Um, for for us at Abvi, you know, you can do either. We will have positions that we will be posting. Um, that you know, again, it doesn't ought hurt to learn a little bit more about the company, um, learn a little bit more about the position, tailor your resume, tailor your cover letter um, to to the position before submitting that. Great, thank you so much everyone. And so we are really close to the end of our time here, but one last question I just want to ask panelists in, in like a sentence, what is the most unique thing or best thing or kind of something to address your company culture about the research park location? Anyone Who do you want to go first? Who, is anyone ready? <laughs> I'll go. Okay. I think uh, <laughs> two things, our sense of mission and we're committed to work hard, play hard, right? Work hard, learn things, but have a great time doing it. Work should be fun. Great, thanks. Anyone else feel ready to tackle that question? Brianna? I would say um, it's very vibrant, but high visibility. So we have um, pretty energetic interns who are driven and ready to tackle um, the projects and work closely to some of the managers that they've been assigned to to help lead those projects. And with that, you know, high reward comes high visibility as well. So um, these are initiatives that are, have been handpicked from, you know, our senior leaders, as I mentioned earlier. Um, and we kind of expect you to present yourself in the manner as if you would um, present in front of our stakeholders, so. Great, thanks so much. We are uh, we are intellectually curious, and we we play pre, we play a pretty tough round of Mario Kart. So, bring your Mario Kart skills. Excellent, excellent, Tim. Uh, I would say um, adaptable because, like I said, we hire students that can go from one time one semester you may be working with nutrition on a project. Next semester, there's a possibility you're over in our corporate IT and then the next semester you're working with uh, diabetes care. So uh, adaptable and, and then also visible because you're going to get to see the whole company um, and have a chance on them. Awesome. And Jerome. I think I would describe us as, as uh, proactive and, and caring. Um, I think in terms of the, the proactive, um, you know, the student I think like to Brianna's sort of point, like you have to, our students work on high visibility projects and you're treated as a member of the team and you're, you'll be asked to, to present 
um, sort of information and the progress uh, to senior leadership. Uh, and so our students need to be proactive in order to keep the project uh, moving. And I think caring, um, students care, we care for each other. Um, students care for the project. And um, within the Abbey Innovation Center, we care for how our students are performing. Um, we, we provide professional development, social, uh, social activities uh, as, as well. And you know, we've done that uh, remotely. Um, and you know, hopefully this summer, we will have some, some in-person uh, to, to come. So we're looking forward to that. Great, thank you. And yes, every company is like a family within itself, but then what's great about the research park is the research park, all of the interns across the park get to meet each other and it's just a really great community to work in. So um, I hope that you'll all join us at the career fair next week. And uh, let's thank our panelists for their, their time today. And I believe that James uh, from the Career Center has a few announcements before we wrap up. Yeah, thank you very much, Jenny. Um, just a couple kind of concluding thoughts here. Again, uh, the Career Center also wants to express our thanks to the panelists. So Brianna, Beth, Tim, Craig, and Jerome, and of course, Jenny, who was moderating for us. Um, we're very thankful for that. A lot of great info. It was great to see the engagement in the chat going on as well. Um, so that's fantastic. Um, also want to, of course, recognize uh, the partners in the event um, with the Career Center, of course, um, the Division of General Studies and uh, Weston LLC through housing. Uh, shout out to Mary McGrath and her students. I think they were hosting um, an in-person viewing group today, which is pretty cool um, that we're able to, uh, you know, provide information to our on-campus students and, and literally students all over the world looking at the, the folks who are registered here. Um, so yeah, that, that's really about it. Uh, last of all, thank you to the students, to everybody who came out today. Um, again, great questions, great engagement from everybody. Um, so thank you all, and uh, we'll go ahead and call it there. I hope everybody has a good day. James, where can the students find the recording? Um, yeah, so I will make sure that I email that out to everybody who is registered. So whatever email address the students provided, I will send it out. Good question for, for that. Thank you, Jenny. All right, perfect. Thanks, everyone. All right, thanks, everybody.